Deck the balls with blah, blah, blah. Ladies and gentlemen, today's video is sponsored by Manscaped. Obviously, as you all know, we are longtime partners of these people. And if you got in-laws like mine, they're already putting out the holiday decorations in November. But ladies and gentlemen, you know what? I'm getting them in their stocking. Some Manscaped performance packages. Ladies and gentlemen, the 4.0 performance package is the one-stop shop for the men who deserves all the deck the balling needs. Of course, you've got the holy grail of grooming products and hygiene items, and they've made it incredibly easy to actually achieve an amazing grooming routine. You've got the 4.0 body trimmer and the Weed Whacker nose and ear hair trimmer, featuring proprietary advanced skin safe technology. No one should hurt themselves while they're doing anything grooming related. Of course, you've also got a 4000 Kelvin LED light on it, so you can actually light your way to proper grooming like Rudolph. Ladies and gentlemen, you can do this in the darkness. I don't care. No one's going to judge you you do what you have to do of course beyond that once you've got a nice groomed candy cane make sure you don't smell like reindeers with the crop preserver ball deodorant and crop reviver ball toner those products are sulfate free vegan so you can never shut up about it and they're made to keep you smelling fresh once they touch your beautiful little sack you'll never go right back then you've got the performance package 4.0 sitting under the tree so to speak guaranteeing to put anybody in that holiday spirit. And then you've got the brand new body buffer. It's an incredible body scrubber that makes exfoliating incredibly easy. And it's a lot cleaner than that loofah you got sitting around probably making God knows what cultures. Manscaped's even got two free gifts in the performance package 4.0, the boxers and the shed travel bag. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to look absolutely nice while you're getting a little naughty, make sure to head to manscaped.com and use code SOG for free shipping and 20 percent off that's 20 percent off plus free shipping with promo code sog at manscaped.com manscaped get your jingle balls ready for the holidays hello guys and gals me mudahar and today's video might be a bit divisive if you will now it's pretty hard to talk about the old steam deck and the nintendo switch in in, 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 any, in any fashion these are always going to be devices that always have some form of competition between each other now, I know I'm a very late on the Steam Deck video, but honestly, I didn't want to make this the first month that I got the device. A, I didn't get the device earlier, and second of all, I got it much later down the road when time had already passed anyways. So for me, making a Steam Deck review really wanted to be something where I wanted to sit down and actually use this device. And the title is not wrong for the video. This is the greatest purchase I have ever made. This is one of the greatest devices that I have ever bought in gaming history right now. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the older I get, the more I realize that I'm not so much of a PC gamer anymore. When I'm playing PC games, I'm usually playing games like Call of Duty Warzone, Rainbow Six Siege, or really games that are pushing graphical limits. Games that require tactile input, okay? Something that I cannot use a controller for. So obviously, for me, PC gaming is something that I don't really get into because as I work on a PC every day, the last thing I want to be doing is having my recreation time in front of the same device. Now, obviously, I can connect my PC to my television and play it like a standard console. But at that point, the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox series serves me well. I also like physical media. So for me, having actual discs is important because that means that I actually have pretty much full ownership of the game. I have ownership of the 1.0 code on that disc. And I also like owning physical devices anyways, and physical discs. Now, when it comes to the Nintendo Switch, this has been one of my most used gaming consoles since it ever released. And why is that? Well, for instance, it does have pretty good games on it, and I'm a JRPG RPG fan. So for me, carrying Final Fantasy games, Dragon Quest games, and recently I've been playing through Shin Megami Tensei V on the actual Nintendo Switch, this is one of the better titles that I want. And of course, playing JRPGs on the go, in bed, connected to your TV whenever you want it, is the absolute perfect experience. Now that being said, I understand Switch games run at a lower resolution, lower frame rate, but I'm willing to make up with these compromises if the game itself is good and the experience is totally perfect, or, well, totally uh, palatable in my opinion. Now, of course, the Switch is retired, because ever since I got the old Steam Deck, this device is used literally to just play Nintendo exclusives whenever I want to. So, of course, that device, alongside Shin Megami Tensei V, hasn't been touched since Xenoblade Chronicles 3, a game that was exclusive to this device. 
Now, since then, I've actually made several posts on social media, and I've talked about the Steam Deck, and it's basically been in my entire gaming setup, uh, visibly on my channel for a long time. That's because, again, I've been using it every single day, pretty much. You know, whether it be playing this in my bed for an hour before I pass out, hooking it up to my actual television as a console experience, and, uh, you know, just playing older PC games on the go, anywhere, is an absolute great time. Carrying this with me on flights to other parts is absolutely better than carrying around a big gaming computer that I don't really feel like using. Now, of course, there's some negatives, but I want to start off with the positives to it. Obviously, comparing itself to the Switch, this is a much stronger device. The OLED Switch right now is $449 retail. The Steam Deck, the cheapest version, is $499. I would not recommend you buy the cheapest version of the Steam Deck. For instance, it does not actually have SSDs in it, so you're actually relegated to 64 gigabytes of eMMC storage on the device. This is not fast enough, nor near enough for some of the larger games that Valve really likes to push out, like Control, Elden Ring, or Death Stranding. Games like Red Dead Redemption 2, games like GTA 5, use more than 64 gigabytes of the storage. When you buy a 64 gig device, you don't even get the whole 64 gigs anyways. You still have to partition and keep some allocated for the operating system itself. Now, of course, you can get the cheapest model of the Steam Deck, but if you're comfortable with updating the SSD yourself using basically off-the-shelf parts, because the Steam Deck is very upgradable, again, if you want to follow these guys, it'll take you about an hour to two hours to do, then you can absolutely do that as well. But if you just want to have an SSD off the bat and you're comfortable with paying a little bit extra off the top, I highly do recommend the middle option. You can always upgrade the Steam Deck no matter which version you have, as far as I understand. But that's just my, like, sort of take on it. Now, the Steam Deck, compared to a lot of other devices that I looked at, such as the GPD Win, the Aya Neo, is far better than those devices, simply due to the fact that it has much more relevant hardware, and the operating system inside it is super amazing. Now, I'm a Linux guy, as you all know. I love me Linux, period. But when it comes to Linux, Valve has created one of the most easy-to-use experiences that's perfect for the average person that just wants to game and the power user like me. Now, the Steam Deck is a full-on PC, okay? If you want to connect this up via HDMI cables, keyboard, and mices, you can get a pretty good desktop Linux experience. You can play games as if you had a desktop PC anyways. But of course, the reality and the best part about it is the actual Steam interface itself. This is probably one of the best interfaces I have seen, period. Launching games, switching games, modifying the power settings is so easily done and so intuitively handled that it literally feels like magic when I'm using this device. Now, I want to start off by saying the performance. The Steam Deck is not the best gaming PC on the market. You're probably looking at something that has the, um, I guess, capabilities of a PlayStation 4 Pro and somewhere up to a PlayStation 5, if anything. Now, generally, that means if you're playing games from this generation or the PlayStation 4 generation, games like Cyberpunk 2077, I've been able to play at medium settings at 40 frames per second, which is pretty smooth feeling on the Switch device as well. Or sorry, not the Switch, the Steam Deck. Of course, beyond that, there's games like Control, Elden Ring, uh, you know, Deus Ex Mankind Divided, Final Fantasy, a lot of these games that I've been playing, which actually do provide a pretty good experience. If you're willing to play at 30 or 40 frames per second at a pretty consistent frame rate, this is pretty much there. Some games from the 360 and PlayStation 3 era do run all the way up to 60 frames per second. Games like Resident Evil 5, games like Dead Space 2. A lot of those titles run absolutely flawlessly on the Steam Deck. And then, of course, you've got older PC games like the original Deus Ex, which I've been playing through on the deck. This runs about as well as one could expect. It's great, feels smooth, and of course, this is where the extensions of the Steam controller come in. So obviously, the system is pretty capable versus the Nintendo Switch, which right now, all right, given recent games like Bayonetta 3, actually is reaching its complete limits. Look, I don't know how the new Legend of Zelda is going to run on this device, but it's already having issues hitting 720p, and it's already having issues keeping up to 60 frames or even 30 frames, depending on the game that's run at it. And there's nothing to shame about it. If you compare both these devices, this is a clear, chunkier product than this lighter device. This lasts longer, and for the most part, it runs cooler and, hey, it's more efficient. It's an ARM-based Android 
NVIDIA Tegra based device, okay? Not Android, but it's an NVIDIA Tegra chipset. So obviously it runs a bit cooler, all right? And generally it feels like a lighter device, okay? If you were to carry this around, it's definitely much more comfortable than the actual Steam Deck. But that said, you do have limitations. Obviously, if you're gonna have something this thin and light, it's going to have limitations in its devices. Now, of course, when it comes to this, this is an x86 full chunky gaming device. And of course, that comes with its own problems. One of them chiefly being battery life. Look, I know that people don't really like to hear it and negatives about the deck device, but this is a big negative. Look, if Valve is out there showcasing that this device can run Death Stranding and it can run Control and it can run Elden Ring, then to be honest with you, if you want to play those games, this is going to give you about an hour, an hour and a half, and if you're lucky, and I mean all the stars align, two hours of battery life, max, okay? That's about as best as I have ever seen. Now, in my personal opinion, it's not the end-all be-all because usually I can plug my device in and I'm not playing a game for more than an hour and a half anyways. And if I was, I would hook it up docked and play it on a big television screen. And that would be my thing. Now, the battery life gets a lot better when you're playing things like Dead Space. That'll give me five hours of battery life on one charge. And if I'm playing something like Pokemon Emerald, which is footage that I can show you because Nintendo gets really pissy about their IPs being emulated on the deck, if I'm emulating PS2 games, Game Boy Advance games, or playing like OG Deus Ex, then uh, yeah, the battery life is actually even longer. See, the system does a really good job of allowing you to match and control power. So for instance, if you're playing something like uh, Death Stranding and you wanna launch it up to 60 frames, you could let it go that far. But the deck has this amazing quick menu that allows you to limit the frame rate, control the TDP of this device and various other clock speeds on the go. It'll even let you monitor all those games perfectly well. Now, when I compare this to other devices like the Aya Neo or the GPD Win, some of those devices do come with their own little overlays and controls, but being that they're Windows 10 devices and a lot of these are just skins over that, it's not as easy or intuitive to control as the Steam Deck is. The Steam Deck just feels and runs better and responds smoother and has just much more intuitive things going on for it. And of course, there is one big feature too start and suspend. So for instance, like the Nintendo Switch, if you wanna just play a game for an hour and close it, you can do that. With the Steam Deck, nearly every game that I've played, I can literally play it on the deck, hit the power button, and it literally just goes into sleep mode. Hitting the power button again, it fires up like no tomorrow, and I'm back to playing the game that I wanted. That's a feature that I absolutely need for any form of portable gaming. So of course, beyond all of it, power controls, battery controls, there are some limitations there, Obviously, this is a beefier device. The battery is going to be chugging through a lot quicker than the old Switch there. But if you're willing to understand that this is a much more capable device, that is an offset you need to be mindful of. Now, of course, beyond all of it, ladies and gentlemen, given that this is a Linux device, one of the other big problems is what games that it can run. Now, if you actually open up the Steam interface and go to the library, it's a little bit confusing. For instance, they start off with Great on Deck, which are games that are completely Steam Deck verified. These are games that you can download immediately and start playing them right there. Now, there's a bunch of games in my library that are completely Steam Deck unsupported or not verified or they're kind of playable. This is a weird metric because unplayable could mean a lot of things. There are games like Rainbow Six Siege, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 that will not run on the deck because of their anti-cheat properties. Likewise, there's a lot of games that just haven't been tested or reached. For instance, games like Red Dead 2 work just fine. Games like GTA 5 run just fine. I would say games in my entire list like Deus Ex Mankind Divided run just fine. Even though this game tells you that it's playable, and not necessarily verified, that just means that there's probably something like the text being too small or the game having a launcher that Valve has just not verified. Unless that experience is as smooth as launching a PS5 game or a Switch game, Valve, I guess, will not verify it. But that doesn't mean you can't play all these games on the deck. You really have to figure out and try it for yourself. You can even install different versions of the Proton layer, which allows Linux to run Windows games and sort of mix and match. Generally, you do have to have some level of expertise or some capability to tinker with the device if you want to absolutely go beyond what it's currently capable of. Now, of course, the other big question is emulation. As you all know, I'm an emulation lover, not an enjoyer, 
Lover. Ladies and gentlemen, there's an amazing device, amazing program known as Emu Deck that allows you to create one of the best front ends that I've ever seen. Now, of course, the Steam Deck can install a bunch of emulators through the, uh, the, the actual store that it has built in. These emulators can range from Nintendo, Super Nintendo, uh, PlayStation 1, 2, 3, yes, PlayStation 3 games, some of them can run on the deck. You've also got, you know, emulators such as the Nintendo Switch, which is how I've also been playing Shin Megami Tensei 5 on the actual deck itself. Generally, Switch games emulated, for the most part, actually run better than I expected. Obviously, don't expect to be running Xenoblade Chronicles 3 or Bayonetta 3 perfectly fine. A lot of those games are just too powerful for the actual Switch hardware to, or sorry, this deck hardware to properly emulate. But of course, beyond that, PSP emulation works really well on this, and generally, the actual experience is jaw-droppingly great. You know, alongside having my actual Steam games on my deck device, I can actually run a lot of my emulators about as well as I could expect them. So I get that experience on the go too. Immediately when I compare the deck to my Switch again, I just get far more gaming opportunities on one device versus the other. And when it comes to portable devices, you typically are only carrying one where with you when you're traveling. So obviously, in that regard, the deck completely wins, and it's one of the reasons why I've been using it every day. For the most part, I'm not actually playing PC games. I'm just playing SNES RPGs, PlayStation 1 RPGs on the go. I've been playing Chrono Trigger perfectly on the actual deck device, and it's been a great experience. One experience that is absolutely amazing about the deck that I have not seen any other PC gaming device have is the input. Now, generally, a lot of the other PC gaming devices will cheap out on the thumbsticks and give you like PlayStation Vita era thumbsticks, which are just uncomfortable, especially for games like Call of Duty Warzone, which I've constantly seen them advertise. This comes with actual proper analog sticks that actually feel like you have some level of tactile input. The D-pad and the face buttons, which look kind of weird initially where they're placed, actually feel a lot better to use in technical gameplay. Then you've also got L1, uh, R1, and all the various triggers. And then you also have the four buttons on the back, which can be mapped to anything. So let's say you're playing something like Factorio. Well, you can actually have a pretty good Factorio experience on the go with all of these various configurations that you can generate with the Steam Deck uh, controller configuration tool. There's also two touchpads on the front, which serve as great tools for things like mice if you're playing old school games like Deus Ex. Now, of course, beyond all of it, the best thing is having the community layouts. So if you're playing an old game and it doesn't come with built-in gamepad support, what Valve will do is allow you to download the most popular controller configuration, and you can just immediately map that to older PC games and start playing them as if they were just natively supporting a controller. This feature translates really well to things like third-party controllers, which the actual deck supports. So for instance, when you're docking this using any dock, I have a third-party one, I connect it by HDMI and plug in a power cable and bam, the deck serves as a console. For me, I can actually connect any controller that I want. I took an Xbox One controller, plugged it in via Bluetooth to the actual deck, and then I was playing games like No Tomorrow. Everything was mapped instantaneously and the experience that Valve provides on the deck is unmatched compared to anything else that I've seen. I think what Valve has done is created a device that has taken PC gaming and has simplified it and made it as intuitive as they can without compromising on the power user features that a lot of us have come to expect from PC gaming. If you're a PC gamer, you can tinker around with this device as much as a typical PC. But if you're somebody that is new to PC gaming or they just want to play like stronger games on the go, which is what this is all for, uh, your experience is as easy to use as something like a Nintendo Switch or a PlayStation 5. Look, coming off the Switch, one of my biggest problems with it was always feeling like I had to be a port beggar. Basically like, hey, did I want to play the brand new RPG on my device? Do I want to play things like Yakuza 7, Like a Dragon, or Lost Judgment on my Switch on the go? I would have loved to do that. I understand playing games on the go means that I have to compromise on visual quality, but to have a device that I can hold in my hand and play in my bed is just a much more comfortable experience than sitting in front of my computer or a gaming console even in my living room and just playing that. So for me, having the ability to download games like Lost Judgment and play them on my actual Steam Deck 
is an amazing, brilliant experience. And it's something that I cannot do on any other device but these gaming PC like handhelds. The other big thing about it is because we're connected via Steam, Steam backups and Steam cloud saves allow me to play Lost Judgment on my deck. And when I'm done, I close the game, it instantly backs up the save file. And then when I wanna play it on my gaming computer, I can just seamlessly play it. I've actually played my gaming computer more because I can just swap these single player games between the Go and the actual main PC that quickly. Of course, even beyond that, one of the things that I love about Valve that has made them probably one of the best, most respected companies, in my opinion, is the fact that they absolutely have not stopped third-party launchers. For instance, I could buy Final Fantasy VII Remake on Steam Store, and I probably should have. But I had an Epic version of the game sitting around. So what I did was I installed the Epic Game Store through a non-Steam application, launched it up, signed in, and then I downloaded Final Fantasy VII Integrate Remake, and I play that just as I would on a standard Steam device anyways. I think it's brilliant to see what this device is capable of, and I'm glad that Valve has not invoked any form of limitations. Now, of course, does that mean it's perfect? I talked about the battery issue. I'm also going to talk about the fact that when this device is docked, I really wish Valve would allow me to unlock and power on the device with a third-party controller, just like I do with the PlayStation. You know, all you have to do is pick up a PlayStation controller, hit the PlayStation logo, and it fires up. The Switch is great. All you have to do is pick up the Joy-Cons while this device is docked, hit the home button, and it fires up like a standard controller. You can't do that with the deck, and it's something I wish they would absolutely implement going into the future. You also can't download games while the deck is in sleep mode, simply because it powers off the entire processor as it's happening. I wish that also got changed, but Valve is doing the most that they can to constantly introduce new features and update this device in real time. It's crazy to see how much the deck has changed from the day that it's launched all the way to now. This is one of the best devices that I've owned, and I'm proud to say that as a, as a Steam Deck lover at this point, I've upgraded from just a simple enjoyer. You know, when it comes to these portable devices, I think Valve has hit the absolute sweet spot. Sure, there are devices right now that are stronger than the Steam Deck. I think the Aya Neo 2 and some GPD devices, like I think they made like the GPD Max 4 or Win 4 that are actually stronger than this. The fact that the interface is so brilliant on this just puts it a cut above the rest of the competition. You've also got the ability to install Windows 11 right onto this device too. I didn't do that because literally getting rid of all of the fun, cool, intuitive features like suspend and resume and the interface of the Steam OS is absolutely meaningless. There's no reason to go down that road unless you want an inferior you know, interface or an inferior device in general. Ladies and gentlemen, Steam Deck has been one of the best purchases I've ever made, and I think it's something that absolutely spanks the Nintendo Switch. Playing the Steam Deck has made me realize that Nintendo finally has some proper competition. And sure, while this device sells more, obviously this Steam Deck is not in stores. You have to go to Valve to buy it directly. But if this was available in the store for the prices that they're selling, I wouldn't be surprised if most people would pick this up over this simply because this just gives you much more options to go off with. Honestly, I want Nintendo to do better. I want them to make a pro model of the Switch or a new revision that allows us to play much more enhanced games on these devices. Because as of now, as a gamer, if I want to have a device, I'm going to go with the Steam Deck versus anything Nintendo related. I don't have to worry about third party support. This is literally a gaming PC. And at the most, I actually can play games of recent eras. And even if those games like of, of recent times get ported onto the Switch, the experience is going to be heavily compromised. This, at least, is a pretty decent stopgap. Ladies and gentlemen, this is me, Mudahar, and uh, if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike if you dislike it. I am...